Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are finally gonna dive into the timing chains of FA and FB series Subaru engines. Now, in the past, we've talked extensively about the timing belt system on the EJ series engine, both single overhead cam and the dual overhead cams, but we haven't looked at timing chains on the F series engine yet. So in today's video, we're gonna go over taking off the timing chain cover, removing chains, tensioners, guides, timing the engine, putting it all together, and putting the cover back on. I looked on Google, I looked online, there's not really a good step-by-step -step DIY friendly video on covering start to finish removal or installation of the timing set on these F-Series engines. So that's what we're gonna do today. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. So guys, what we have before us right now is an FA20D out of a 2013 Subaru BRZ. This is the naturally aspirated two liter version of the FA FB series engine. Now, as far as timing cover and the timing chains components go, it should be the same for basically all of the F series engines. There are slight variations, uh, especially off the top of my head, the very first FB engines that were in the Foresters and I believe the early Outbacks that did not have variable valve timing on the exhaust camshafts, only on the intakes. So you will have blanks here, but it's still gonna be the same process, getting the cover off and getting the chains off. So first off in getting to this point, we've removed idler pulleys from the serpentine belt system. We've removed the water pump pulley and a couple of the things just to get clear access I had to remove the wiring harness here for oil pressure sensor, for the VVT, for the cam sensors, all of that good stuff. Just everything off of the front of the timing chain cover. We're gonna have to remove this 22 millimeter headed bolt that holds the crankshaft pulley into position. Now, you can impact this off, but they are kind of stuck on here pretty good. There is a special holding tool for this crankshaft pulley. It does not use the same one as the old EJ series did that had the four pins that slide in. Uh, this one uses like an adjustable, um, adjustable spanner that has pins that screw in and interlock here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that tool out. We'll break this free and remove this crank pulley. So this is the tool in question for holding the crankshaft pulley. Now this is a very cheap one off of Amazon. It's not that great a quality. It actually tweaked over and kind of bent the first time I removed this. So don't really recommend it, but it can get you by in a pinch. It does have the tips you need for the crankshaft pulley. It also has the tips you need for the camshaft pulleys. I will leave a link in the description for this one, but again, it's not that great. So we lock in our ears, put downward pressure on the pulley to keep it from turning as we break free that bolt. Now, full disclosure here, I did go through and take this all apart, prep it, clean it, get it ready for this video so it would be easier to show you guys as I did it. So everything's not gonna be exactly torqued to specification or exactly as tight as it will be normally. Uh, you will need a sizable half inch drive breaker bar to break this bolt loose or an impact if you can get the impact in there to get that free. So now that we got the bolt out, we can pull our crankshaft pulley off. It should pull off fairly easily by hand unless you're in the rust belt and it's super rusted on there. Now underneath the crankshaft pulley, we have the oil pump drive and it has an O-ring here. This O-ring is a one-time use. Once you take it off, you need to replace it. So just be wary of that. Now slide out your oil pump drive. It keys into your crankshaft down here and it's got flat spots on either side to engage your oil pump. Now on the FA, FB series engine, your oil pump is made into this front aluminum timing cover. It is not bolted to the engine block and turned off of the crankshaft in the same manner. Uh, it uses this little interchange or this little uh, adapter here to drive the pump and transfer the power from the crankshaft to the crank pulley. This also is your area where your crankshaft or front crank seal rides or front timing cover seal rides uh, to keep oil from coming out around this area. So pull this out, set that to the side. Again, you need a new O-ring once you remove that pulley. 
So from here, we're basically ready to start removing our fasteners to pull the timing cover off. Now you've got quite a few 12 millimeter headed bolts around the perimeter. There's two different sizes. There are long ones and there are short ones. So just make sure that you keep track of where the long ones go and where the short ones go. It's pretty self-explanatory that these will be short ones and these over here on the raised parts of the timing cover will be the long ones. Uh, in the middle here, you have 10 millimeter headed bolts. You've got one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. You've got five across the front of the cover. You've got long ones on the outside and the three centered ones are short. Now, once you get that off, that's the easy part. The hard part is prying this cover off without one, breaking it because it's aluminum, and uh, two, without warping it or uh, you know just causing a big nightmare headache. This is all sealed with RTV silicone. We've talked about that in past videos, how RTV silicone seals up the majority of the F-Series engine. So these things are stuck on here, glued on here really, really well because all of this surface area around this timing cover has to hold in oil. So if you don't have it sealed up, you're just gonna leak oil everywhere. So there is lots of RTV around the outside. Now, as I said, took this off already, prepped it, so my cover is gonna fall right off. Yours will not. There are special areas designated around the timing cover for you to put a pry bar or a large screwdriver and gently pry on it. I say gently, you will have to pry with some force, but you can't just go in there and reef on it immediately. You've got to kind of wiggle it and slowly put pressure, move around the outside of the cover until that RTV starts to give way. Then you can get it all the way off, but don't go in there and just start ripping on it because you will break ears off the cover, break the cover, and this cover is not cheap. But you do have a pry point here. You've got pry points here. There's a pry point here. You've got one here one here, and I believe there's uh, one in the bottom corner here, and one somewhere over here, and there's one up here beside the oil filler cap. But we'll take a look at that in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the impact, impact socket, and we're gonna remove all the fasteners for the timing chain cover now. So first, 10 millimeter on here. I'm gonna go ahead and rip those out. And as I said, there are two different size bolts. There are long ones, as you see here on the outside of the cover, and there are short ones, as you see here, on the inside of the cover. So just remember where the longs and where the shorts went. So now we can switch sockets and go after our 12 millimeters. You see that was a long one and that is a short one. We've just got the two different sizes there. So just make sure you keep track of where the longs go and where the shorts go so you don't have an issue when it comes time to reassemble. As like I said, my cover will come off substantially easier than yours will because again, I've already removed it, removed all the RTV silicone. It's not glued on here. Yours will be glued on here. So we're gonna go over and look at these prying points and I will show you exactly where you can pry on it and where not to pry on it as not to cause any damage because you don't wanna gouge any of the ceiling surface, any of the flat part of the timing chain cover or the engine block where you create distortion and it won't seal back up when you go to reassemble it and you got a big oil leak. So you have a pry point here, you've got a pry point here, you've got a pry point here, You've got a pry point here. There is a point here. I don't think Subaru technically wants you to pry here, but you can uh, wedge the old pry bar in there and give her a tug. And underneath, you've got a pry point right here. And you've got a pry point right here. So again, take your time, be patient. You don't wanna crack this big cover. It is not cheap to replace it if you destroy it. So one more thing to mention before you go removing the timing cover is there is a steel dowel here and a steel alignment dowel here. As you can see, magnet sticks to it. Everything else is aluminum, dissimilar metals. You can have this corrode up really bad and really get stuck right here. Luckily, you've got a prying point right beside it. But again, be careful. You can crack this right around that dowel. So penetrating oil, a little bit of heat. Uh, this one down here is in a bad spot where you can't really pry on it, but once you get the top of the cover free, 
and work it back and forth, you should be able to work it off of that dowel. But uh, now that we've got that all out of the way, all of our bolts are out and uh, you know, we've been gentle in prying and uh, taking our time, we should be able to get the brake free. And once it finally breaks free, then it should simply come right off. So there is also an easier way to get the timing cover off, and that is by a special tool that Subaru sells. I'll put that on the screen now, but it's a plate system that bolts up to either side of the engine bank, and then you use these forcing screws to press the front timing cover off. That kit also comes with a set of alignment pins that go in at the top here that help you guide the timing chain cover back on where you don't have to worry about getting it sideways or screwing up your bead of silicone, getting it lined up and pressed back on. Now, as I mentioned before, this is the easy part. The nightmare comes in having to clean all of this ceiling surface all the way around of the RTV silicone. All of this is aluminum. You can't just go in there with a grinding disc with a little Rolock wheel and just grind at all this RTV. Cause one, you'll sling all kinds of debris inside the engine, inside oil galleys, etc. And uh, it's no bueno. You'll also launch lots of RTV everywhere and you'll dig into the aluminum. Now, the way I've done it and the way I've seen done, uh, there's a several different methods. Subaru has this uh, RTV silicone dissolving spray that they want you to spray on there. The problem with that is there is RTV uh, right here on the head gasket between the block and the head. There's RTV right here between the cam carrier and the um, cylinder head. There are, there's RTV between the upper oil pan and the bottom of the engine block. You spray all that on there willy-nilly and it can start eating into here. Then once you've got the timing chain cover back on, then you start getting oil leaks between the head gasket and the block, between the head and the cam carrier, between the upper oil pan and the block. So that's another thing you gotta be worried about when doing that. So this is quite a labor intensive job, cleaning off all of the ceiling surface around the engine. Also, you gotta clean the timing chain cover. The inside of that timing chain cover has all the same RTV on it. And it's even more of a pain because it has a little groove that the RTV sits below and you gotta clean that groove out. Also, when you're cleaning it, you don't want a bunch of crap flying around either coming off of whatever media you're using to remove it and uh, the aluminum timing cover. You don't want all that crap getting around in the cover because your oil pump and all of that is located in the cover and you don't wanna get all that stuff down in your oil pump. So again, it is a very labor intensive, time consuming job to go through here and just prep all this once you've opened it up to put it back together and seal it back up. I went the slow and painful way and that was a very sharp razor blade, some brake parts cleaner and a brass bristled hand brush just to clean up uh, brass rather than a steel bristle because aluminum. Um, got it pretty much prepped up, cleaned up. This is not how it go back. There's still lots of areas I need to go back and address. This was just cleaning up a junk engine for the video. Now on the timing chain cover, as I said before, there is a groove that is a big pain to clean up and you really can't get it with just a razor blade. As you see right here, this groove all the way around gets caked in RTV silicone. Uh, so the Subaru RTV uh, removal spray is good for this side because you're not gonna compromise any three-way seals, like I said before, like between the cam carrier and the head, the head and the block, etc., or the upper oil pan and the block. Uh, again, you don't want to sling a bunch of junk with a power tool around the oil pump and uh, you just gotta clean it all up. So there are a couple little areas here, here, here where those 10 millimeter headed bolts go through the timing cover where they're gonna be gooped up with RTV because you gotta make a little RTV dam around the outside of them. So uh, just be wary of that. Also, there's another thing you gotta think about here and that is O-rings. There are O-rings between the block head, et cetera, and the timing chain cover. You've got O-rings here, 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 and here. As far as I recollect, it's just those four. But uh, you gotta make sure those O-rings are in place when you go to put it back together. 
you want to put new O-rings in here. You don't want to reuse the old ones, as you saw. It gets hard. Not so much hard as flat, squished out. Doesn't want to reseal. So you don't want to put all this back together with old O-rings and then have a pressure issue or internal leakage issue. So be sure to replace all of those O-rings. Get them from your Subaru dealer. Uh, when you are reapplying the silicone, you want to be careful about where you apply it and how thick you apply it. You apply too much, it's going to squish out both outside of the block and the timing cover, but also inside. You can block up oil passages. You can squirt so much out that it'll block up or it can uh, be squished out and then it can break off and end up in your oil pan or your oil pickup. Because as we talked about not too long ago, there was an issue with the new BRZ and GR86s where they were getting oil in the pickup and the oil pan brand new because Subaru screwed up and put too much RTV and it squished out and wound up in the oil pickup tubes. So there's a lot of things you gotta be very careful about with this engine uh, and doing the timing compared to the good old timing belt on the EJ series engine that was just so much easier and so much more forgiving. All right, so now that we're inside the engine, let's talk more about the timing and the components of the timing set here. Well, firstly, let's talk about timing marks. Now, these engines don't have the same kind of timing marks or the way they time themselves up like the EJ series engine did. On these, you have these little triangles that I have painted yellow to easily represent them to you guys on the camera. They're not yellow by default, but to be in time, both of the triangles have to be pointed directly at each other on both sides of the engine, you want your triangles pointed together and your keyway on your crankshaft has to be pointed straight down, straight in line with the parting line of the block, down. This down, triangles pointed together, triangles pointed together, your engine is in time. All right, so before we get into all of this really quickly, why are we in here? Why do we need to know this? Well, one, if you have a leaking time and chain cover need to reseal it, or if you have leaking uh, cam carriers, you need to get all this off to get the cam carriers. Uh, if you happen to have a head gasket issue, very unlikely on the F-Series engine, you need to get all this stuff off to do that. If you're rebuilding the engine, uh, if you have timing chain rattle or timing chain tensioner rattle or noise from the guides, I'll put a clip in of that. <laughs> As you heard, lots of rattling, and then it went away. These are fed by oil pressure, so once the oil pressure kicks in, they take the slack out of the chain and stops rattling. So if you got that rattle, you probably need to get in here and change these tensioners and likely the guides on your engine. So again, why are we in here? Why would we be in here? There you go. We're gonna start with the right-hand side of the engine. We need to remove our timing chain here first because it is on the outside over the left-hand side of the engine. So to start off with, we need to relieve the tension on the timing chain. We need to relieve the tension on the timing chain tensioner. So we're gonna take our tensioner here and we're gonna press up on our uh, guide here while we turn this. There's a little ratchet mechanism in here with a paw. I'll get a closer shot of it, but it's got teeth and a paw. And as this goes, it catches those teeth. Once you've got it turned like that, you can simply press down and collapse that tensioner. Then uh, take an old timing chain tensioner uh, grenade pin. Uh, I kept about a billion of these things. I don't know why I hoard them, but uh, run that in there. Let it click one time, run it in there, and that will hold your tensioner compressed where you've got slack here now. Now, once you've got that slack there, you can go ahead and remove the two 10 millimeter headed bolts for your tensioner here. So we'll go ahead and knock out that. And just like that, we're gonna remove our tensioner. Now, as I was talking about a minute ago, there are teeth here on this tensioner uh, piston or rod and there's a little paw here that catches, just like a ratchet. So you have to rotate this to get that catch out of the way where you can compress that. Then you stick your old pin here in to hold it compressed. So now that we've got the tensioner out of the way, we can set that to the side. 
and uh, really quickly there are holes that feed our oil to our tensioner. So now the tensioner is out of the way and we got slack in our chain, we can go through and pull our guide. And as we see here, we do have some wear marks on it, but can't really grab it with my fingernail. It's still pretty flush. That's a good looking guide. Don't have any issues, no cracking, anything like that. So it should be fine to reuse that on this engine. We'll set that to the side. Now we need to remove our upper guide here. And we're gonna grab a five millimeter hex socket. And we'll remove our fastener here. Now we need to move our chain around and put some slack at the top. And now we can slide that upper guide off. And again, we see lines where the chain was rubbing on it, but there's no grooves there. So this chain tensioner or guide is uh, still good to go. We'll set that to the side. Now that we've got our guides out of the way and our tensioner out of the way, we can go ahead and pull our chain off. And now we can pull our chain and set that off to the side as well. All right, so now on to the left-hand side of the engine. Now we can't just unbolt this like we did the other side of the engine because these two camshafts are under spring tension from our valve springs. So to relieve that spring tension, we need to rotate the engine. Now a lot of people might freak out that, oh, you can't rotate the engine while you know, your timing chain's off, your time belt's off because you're going to bend the valve or hurt something. Well, this is official how you do it from Subaru, so no worries there as long as you don't go meddling around with anything. So we're going to need an engine barring tool. It's just a socket that goes on your ratchet and then slides over the crankshaft so you can rotate the engine. This is a CTA 5305. I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick this up for the F-Series engine. It just slides on to the end of the crankshaft. If I can line it up just like so. And uh, then we need to rotate the engine clockwise. Now we need to turn it until our keyway that was facing straight down is facing more or less in line with this pin right here. So that ought to do it. You don't have to be bang on perfect, but you want this keyway right here to be pretty much in line with this. You also want this arrow pointed down, this one pointed up at an angle. So now that that is set the way we have it, now we can go through the same process again. Now we're gonna take and press down slightly while moving that paw out of the way for the ratcheting mechanism on the tensioner. Just like so. Then we can push up and collapse it. Let it drop one notch. And then we need to take a pin. I've got a paper clip here because this hole is much smaller than our, our lower tensioner. So we've got our tensioner pin back now. We've got slack right here. So now we can remove this tensioner. Again, two 10 millimeter headed bolts. And we can unbolt our tensioner. Now this tensioner is different than the lower tensioner. They're not interchangeable as we've seen. There's different colors. This one's pink. I believe the other one is blue. Uh, there are different colors and different designs on these chain tensioners. They've been uh, superseded and refined a couple of times. But uh, this one has a large O-ring behind it that the other tensioner does not. So that's another O-ring you need to buy and have on hand if you're going to take all this apart. So 
pull our two tins out, pull our tensioner. As you see, we got O-ring, we got the oil feed. Uh, so O-ring here, O-ring here, O-ring here, O-ring here, and O-ring here. So lots and lots of O-rings to worry with. So we got our tensioner off. We can set that off to the side. Now that the tensioner's out of the way, we can swing this chain guide up and off. Again, looking at it, we can see where it's been riding, but nothing catches a fingernail. Still smooth, still usable. Set that off to the side. Now we can take our tension off of our chain or move our tension from the, our uh, slack from the top of the chain, drop it down around to the bottom here. And now we can remove that lower chain guide. Again, five millimeter hex. Just right here in the corner. Pop that loose. And pull that lower guide. Now that that is out of the way, we can go ahead and pull our chain. And set our chain off to the side. And just like that, we have removed our time and chain set from our engine. So now if we needed to tear the engine down, remove camshafts, cam carriers, cylinder heads, any of that stuff, we can do it because we've now properly removed our timing chain set. All right, so we're done with whatever repair we needed to do with getting the timing chains off the engine, and we're ready to put it all back together, ready to put the timing chains back on. So first off, we need to grab our chain. Now, when we look at our chain, there are colored links. We've got a blue one, and we've got two pink ones. We've got one here, and there is another pink one right over here. So we got pink here and a pink here, and then we got the blue. The pink's kind of hard to see. There we go. Not looking too good on the camera. There we go. You can really see the pink and pink and the blue. Sorry. So our pink will line up with lines that are on our cam sprockets, and our blue will line up with our timing mark that is on our crank pulley, which is uh, just offset of the keyway. So I'm going to show you on the cam sprockets and the crank sprockets where that mark is that you line up. Again, I painted it yellow so it's easier to see. It will not be yellow on yours. It's just a little line indented in that pulley. So our timing mark for our crankshaft is right here. You see that mark just offset of the keyway. And we've got a mark back here on the back gear as well. Now on our cam sprockets, I'll show you on both of them, that little line right there and that little line right there. And on this side, this little line and this line, where is it? This line, that is what we line up our painted links to. So we're ready to put our time and chain back on. Now we'll take our pink link on our yellow line on both of the cam pulleys and we'll snake it around and put our blue link on the dot on the crank sprocket. So now that those colored links are where they should be in relation to the chain, we can go ahead and put our lower chain guide back in place. Again, we might wanna rotate that around just to give us some slack to put it on. And then we can pull our chain links back into place where they need to be. Now 
Now, once we've got that back into place, we can go ahead and torque our bolt here to specification, which is 6.4 Newton meters. So 6.4 Newton meters. Now we can take our upper guide, slide that on the pin and pivot it back down into place. And then we can come in with our tensioner. Again, remember to have your O-ring in place, a fresh new O-ring, and reinstall, bolt the tensioner back into place. And again, 6.4 Newton meters on the torque wrench. Now, once that is done, all of our slack should be on this side. The chain should be taut everywhere else. Go ahead and pull our grenade pin. And our tensioner has sprung out and has taken the slack out of the chain. Now that you've pulled your pin, all you need to do is take a pry bar and ever so gently pull down or press down on this guide until you hear this tensioner click one time. Click right there. Did you hear the click? Now we're good. That is tensioned correctly and we have no slack in our chain. Now, what we need to do is rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise. So we need to put our crank back where it's supposed to be with the keyway pointed dead down and pull those two triangles in to point at each other. So slowly rotate the crankshaft back. Again, get that keyway pointed straight down in line with the block and get your arrows pointed at each other on the camshafts. Straight down. Triangles pointed at each other. And we're ready to install the right hand chain. All right, so just like our other chain, we have painted links. We've got a blue one for the crankshaft and we have our pink links for our camshafts. So what we need to do now is go around and match up our pink links to our marks once again, like we did on the other side of the engine. Set those on our painted lines. And again, your lines won't be painted. And drag your chain all the way over and we're gonna line our blue link on that dimple right there by the keyway. All of our slack needs to be down here at the bottom where our tensioner is gonna be. All right, so now we can go through and install the upper guide. And again, you might want to rotate the slack in the chain around to drop it, just so you can get that guide into place first. Again, five millimeter hex here. We're going to torque it to 6.4 Newton meters. And if you ever tighten it just a hair like I did, it's not gonna be the end of the world. It's not gonna kill anything. So again, make sure your pink links are lined up and your blue link is still lined up. So now we can go ahead and put the lower guide into place.
can be a pain to get that on there. All right, now that that's in place, we can bring our lower tensioner into position and bolt it back on. Again, 10 millimeter headed bolts, 6.4 newton meters of torque. And just like before, we're gonna make sure our mark is still lined up on our crank. We're gonna make sure our mark is still lined up on our cams. Slack is over here. This side is tight. I'm gonna go ahead and pull our grenade pin once again. Tensioner pops out. And once again, we'll take our pry bar and we will gently lift up on that guide. and it actually clicked while I was talking, uh, but we'll move it up until it clicks into place and it tensions that up. And click. Nice and tight, good to go. So now our timing chains are installed correctly and properly tensioned. Now just to check our handiwork, we are going to rotate the engine or rotate the crankshaft two revolutions till our keyway is pointed straight down again and just gonna make sure that all of our alignment marks are aligned and that nothing is uh, out of the ordinary. All right, so two crankshaft revolutions. And our triangles are pointed in. Triangles are pointed in. And our keyway is pointed straight down with the parting line of the engine blocks. So uh, there we go. Timing is set and checked. Everything is good to go. We're ready to put our cover back on. So now that the very difficult part of cleaning and prepping everything is out of the way and we're ready to reassemble, here comes an equally stressful thing, and that is applying the correct amount of RTV silicone to our timing chain cover and getting it back on without it overly squishing out and getting into oil passages or breaking off and dropping into the oil pan or not putting enough in it, not sealing in us leaking oil. So there is a diagram from the factory service manual I'll put up, and it's the hardest to read, most convoluted thing you've ever seen. But essentially, you want to put a bead of RTV silicone around the cover in this outer groove here. Now, you want to put a little bit with your finger smeared up here just to make sure you got good coverage area. But again, prep is key. You want to make sure everything's nice and clean, no residue, nothing on it, or else the RTV won't stick or it won't cure correctly. So super clean this, brake parts cleaner, everything else, nothing on it. So again, put that ridge of RTV in this inner channel. And then on these little dimpled areas, there's a ridge on the outside. You want to put a little ring of RTV around each of these. And I do mean a little ring. You don't glob this stuff on here. Uh, I think the factory service manual says a 2 to 4.5 millimeter bead uh, in certain areas and certain applications. But you don't need anything bigger than that. And 2 to 4.5 millimeters is very small. Um, all the way around... Again, careful down here. You don't want to block the uh, oil return. Uh, you got that O-ring you need to put here for the oil pump. You got an O-ring up at the top for the oil pump. You got an O-ring over here. And the O-ring, uh, where is it at? Up here at the top. Uh, you do have to run the RTV around here. It's uh, 
just not an easy task. And uh, I'm not gonna do it here because this is a mock engine for now, but uh, will be an engine that we're gonna eventually rebuild and replace rod bearings in, so I got a spare engine for my BRZ. So once you've got your RTV applied to your timing chain cover, you need to put it on the engine. Now you need to do so extremely carefully guiding this on here because if you accidentally, you know, brush against the chains or brush against the cam sprockets, uh, you're gonna one, disturb your RTV bead around the timing chain cover, and two, you're gonna have RTV in your chain or on your cam sprocket that can sling off and get inside the engine. So no bueno, it's good to have that. Removal tool I mentioned earlier because it comes with alignment dowels that you can screw in and helps guide it on there straight and evenly where you're not gonna cattywampus it and uh, you know smudge your RTV. So get it up there, slide it on, get yourself on your alignment dowels. and up against the engine block. Now, I believe the factory service manual says that uh, within five minutes of getting your RTV put onto the timing cover, you need to go ahead and slam it onto the engine block or engine assembly because it's the block and the heads and the cam carriers. So now we can go ahead and start putting our fasteners in and we'll just lightly tighten them for now. I'll go ahead and grab my Impact driver. So you just want to zip them in there loosely enough to uh, hold the cover up there and uh, start squishing your RTV out. So I'm just going to go around the outside of the cover now, put all the fasteners back in. Then I will show you the torque pattern because you have to torque these in a certain order as well as the torque specs for the fasteners. All right, so now that you've got all the bolts hand tight, we can go through and torque these in the correct sequence. Now you got two specifications for your 10 millimeter headed small bolts across the front in the center. You're torquing those to 10 Newton meters. All of your 12 millimeter headed bolts around the perimeter are being torqued to 25 Newton meters. So first off, we are tightening this bolt here, 10 Newton meters. And we're going to jump across to this one. We're going to jump back across to this one. Jump back across to this one. And jump back across to this one. All right, now that those are all set, we can go up against our bigger bolts around the perimeter. So that was one through five. So we start out with six to 25 Newton meters. Then we go to seven. Then we go to eight. Now we drop down to nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Now 
we jump up here for 14. Then to 15. Down here for 16. Then the 17. And 18. Now we jump over here for 19. And 20. Drop down for 21, 22, and 23. And beside that is 24. Top corner for 25. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. And twenty-eight. Crossover. Four, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, and thirty two. And that's got us. That's all 32 fasteners. Torque specification in proper sequence. Now that our cover is back on and torqued to specification, we can go ahead and install our oil pump drive. Good idea to put a little light oil around the outside of that to help it get in that seal. Of course, you want to replace that front seal if you're going through all of this. Pull our crank pulley back in the spot. And now we can reinstall our crankshaft bolt. All right, now we can go ahead and torque our crankshaft pulley. It's a two-step process. First, you're gonna torque it to 20 Newton meters. or roundabout to it. Then you are gonna rotate it 90 degrees past that. All right, so you can either mark your bolt with a marker and then turn it a quarter turn, or if you've got a torque wrench with angle like I do, then just set it up to 90 degrees and go for it. You also want to make sure you've got adequate lubrication under the head of the bolt and on the threads before you go to torque it so you don't get that creaking like I got. But again, mock engine is gonna come back apart for the rebuild. And uh, for those curious, 90 degrees, it looked like it was about 190 uh, Newton meters there when I pulled on it. So there you go. All right, guys, and there you have it. Timing chains on FA FB Series Subaru engines. 
not as bad as you would think. Hopefully it's not as intimidating to you viewers. Again, there is a lot of care that has to be taken in the prep work cleaning up of the ceiling surfaces on the timing chain cover and on the block. And you also have to be wary of getting contamination inside the engine. But other than that, it's a pretty easy job once you get to the chains, tensioner, all that itself. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you all in the next one.